People have long dreamt of living in paradise. But for most, it's somewhere just out of reach. I think we're all searching for paradise, our own little garden of Eden. Billionaire Sir Richard Branson has tried to do the impossible and create utopia on his 74-acre private island called Necker in the middle of the Caribbean Sea. It's just a place of absolute beauty. It's really lovely. We didn't even like speak to one another for like an hour. We were just like in awe. Enjoying this Garden of Eden comes at a price. One week's stay costs over £280,000. They want to know what Patchy's business is, what do you do, what, how do you make your money? This is the story of the guests who come to stay on Necker Island and those who serve them, working tirelessly to sell the Caribbean dream. Sometimes they're good and bad. Yes, I mean, because some are real messy really, ones. Really messy. Yes, yeah, some group are really demanding. All day, they, they, they will ask, ask for food and food. They have to battle to keep nature at bay. They're just wasting their time. That sand is fine where it is. And attend to the guests every whim. We once had a new management team that came, and they brought in two rules. The first, staff cannot drink with the guests, and staff may not um, have relationships with the guests. It's um, not the way this island would work or run very well. <laughs> Two hundred miles northwest of Antigua lies Necca. It's one of the smallest of the British Virgin Islands but its reputation stretches far and wide. It's attracted everyone from Nelson Mandela and Princess Diana to Kate Moss and One Direction's Harry Styles. All stations, all stations, just to let you know, helicopters arriving in 10 minutes. House manager Kat grew up in Oxfordshire. She was 16 before she'd had the chance to travel abroad. My family holidays were very much um, a caravan in a nice beach location in the UK. So this is, uh, yeah, a dream. We are about to go and meet Kerry and Patch, who are um, some good friends of ours. They've stayed here on NECA many times. Because of its remote location, getting to the island isn't easy. After flying to the Caribbean, guests make the rest of the journey either by boat, or if they can afford it, by helicopter. <laughs> Birmingham couple Kerry and Patch are frequent visitors. So the first time we came here was our honeymoon, so back in 2005. I've been here nine times. Oh, I've been eight. I love seeing guests coming back for the 10th time, for the 21st time, and just still having that absolute sense of elation, joy, and just getting away from the rest of the world. <laughs> Necker caters for just 30 people in 15 rooms. Usually, the whole island is hired out, costing over £40,000 per night. But for a few weeks a year, guests don't have to book the entire island. Rooms are rented out individually. <laughs> Patch and Kerry are staying in the master suite that costs a mere £30,000 a week. Absolutely massive. Massive? <laughs> wow. Much higher than the old room. The vibe of it is homely. Um, and when you come in, you're immediately relaxed. And it is homely because th there's no pretense when you get here. Um, you, you, you're straight into your flip-flops. You're straight into relax mode. You do get some guests when they get here. They're a little bit kind of... Was it, we're expecting it to be the Savoy or something. 
and it isn't. Still with the out outdoor bathtub, yeah. uh -huh. outdoor okay. shower, and of course, the jacuzzi. The jacuzzi. Yeah. Definitely the most romantic place. It is in the, the world. most romantic place in the world. Yes. You get your formal hotels, but uh, this is beyond that, really. It's in a different kind of. Yeah. I think so. Marketplace all together. It's kind of. It's what I've said before about the, the other places that we've been to, and, and it, you've got that pomposity, and I hate that. And you have to wear the right things, you have to wear the right clothes, and everything's got to be formal at dinner. Here, it doesn't matter that you're in flip flops and your hair's wet. And <laughs> oh, that's Richard kiting. Oh, right. <laughs> Impressive stuff. It's looking good, eh? We'll get you out there this week, Patch. <laughs> <laughs> To run the island requires 100 members of staff, at least three for every guest. The majority live on a neighbouring island, Virgin Gorda, which is a 10-minute commute by boat. That's the knicker bed. You can't just come in and do it like that. You have to practice until you get perfect. Patsy and Agatha have been cleaning up after guests for nearly a decade. I work in some of the biggest hotels in Canada, but actually Necker Island, I never seen nothing like Necker Island before. All the rich and famous comes here. Yeah, and that is so true. I seen a lot of rich and famous people here. Sometimes they're good and bad. Yes, I mean, got some it's real messy really, ones. Really, really messy. We used it all. But we are accustomed. We are accustomed to it, you know. That's our job to clean up after the guests. So we don't have a problem with that. I love uh, sex in the city, but I can't remember which one of them are here. I can't remember her name at all. Because that's my favorite show. But we try not to discuss what happened at Nicker. What happened at Nicker stays at Nicker. <laughs> Necker has been Richard Branson's home for over three decades, but he's still inspired by its beauty. I've always got up early, but particularly here. It's just <laughs> look at that. Um, oh look, here we go. Just uh, just coming in now. Look at that. I get excited every time. <laughs> we're, we'll be in the middle of a conference here and I'll go, coming guys. <laughs> Richard runs his Virgin Empire from a poolside office on the island. Every morning he meets with his two personal assistants, Helen and Joe, who help him with his emails. I, uh, still old fashioned, I dictate 90% of them, so it's great that they know everything that's going on, so that I know what's going on. Otherwise, I wouldn't know what the hell's going on. <laughs> <laughs> we may be floating Virgin Money in the next couple of weeks, Virgin America, we may be floating in the next couple of weeks, which is an airline in the, in the States. So, um, you know, so from here, we sort of, you know, keep a, keep a, a watchful eye on everything. These two lovely ladies who I've uh, worked work with for a while, Helen, you've, uh, for the, lot, the longest, she was the I stewardess did. once as well. So a lot of our time is just spent uh, when we're not on Necker on, on the road and... Um... There's no job like this. <laughs> there literally is no job like this. Every single email you send is completely different. Every bit of correspondence you're having with people is completely different. So nothing's, nothing is ever the same, ever. It's just every single day is different. So very. It's great. You never know what you're going to get. Yeah, you never know what you're going to get, literally. We were having a meeting here once and somebody ran into the meeting who'd actually swum uh, from another island to uh, come to see me with a proposition. I think it, his idea was gyms on trains, which wasn't a bad idea, actually, but it's just, uh, sadly, trains need all the space they can get just to transport people, but, um, yeah. <laughs> now, there are people who rent the island to come to pitch. <laughs> yes. Richard bought the island in 1978 for 180,000 pounds. He was 28 years old, and his company, Virgin Records, was just starting to have hit albums. When I saw this magical island from the air, um, 
uh, I've just never seen anything more perfect except <laughs> my beautiful uh, lady I was uh, wooing who is also in the helicopter with me. And um, so I saw the two most perfect things in the world all at the same time and, uh, and I was determined to try to capture them both. And um, it took me a while to persuade her, um, but finally got there. And it took me a while to persuade the owners to sell it to me. And I had to then go and work really hard to try to make some money to actually do something here. And fortunately, our record company started to become successful. And in time, we were, we were able to turn it into something really special. Richard is the founder of the Virgin Group, which employs over 50,000 people worldwide. But Necker has always been the home he could escape to, where he raised his children and married his wife, Joan. Hey guys, go ahead. Hey Seth, we have uh, some guests down at the hot tub that are requesting you make some pina coladas for them. They've um, also requested that you could do it shirtless if that's possible. Anything's possible on NECA. Groundsman Brian and Ornette have been working for Richard for decades. When they first arrived, Necker wasn't the manicured island it is today. When I came over here, it was not as developed as now. A lot of these coconut trees is me and Brian and other people plant them from small. So we actually watch them grow. We, we used to um, climb the tree. But in more, in more modern eyes now, we have a stick on the island that we could get it for, for the guests which is very important, the stick. Yeah. It's hard to climb the tree. I was like eight, nine. I was climbing trees then. But at this age, you know, I can't make that. <laughs> this job is my, with my everything. Without this job, I is nothing. Here's where I get my daily income every day, which is good, take care of my wife and children, send them to school, make them have a proper schooling, which is good. So this job is everything to me. That's it, we're going up now, we'll go take them up to the guests. Kenny grew up in Wales and came to the island as a water sports instructor 10 years ago. Today, he's the general manager. I'm the boss on Necker. I manage it along with my wife, Lisa. Um, kind of fell into tourism and holidays and fell in love with the industry and ended up here, ended up teaching kite surfing here. Uh, really enjoyed it, realised that there was good opportunity if you work hard and um, ended up becoming the, the general manager and you know, I've really, really loved it. I, I don't think, I never thought that would happen. I'd never even heard of Necker Island. Um, but yeah, that's where it ended up. The island is a multi-million pound business and Kenny employs half a dozen people to take care of its accounts. Millie is head of finance. She moved to the Caribbean with her husband and son two and a half years ago. If you have to have an office job, I mean, this is the place to have an office job. Um, we spend a lot of time in the office, but we do get out, meet the guests and hang out and do casino and whatever. But I do tend to get quite busy and focused, but I try and get out there once a week, once every couple of weeks. They always bring me out to, and I volunteer to do the casino night because I can count. So that's, <laughs> that's always good. I, I do, um, I'll croupier blackjack or something like that for them. And, and hang out with the guests, and then I'll normally just sleep over and have a good time. I love that I get asked to do things like that, because well, when you're an accountant, you, you're not always able to bring your personality to work, and you're not always able to be exactly as freaky as you really are. Whereas here, you're very much encouraged to be um, who you are. Like, we work really, really hard, but we're also encouraged to play hard. Like Friday, it was a guest's birthday, um, they were looking for something a little bit different and 
one of the guest services people would come up with, you know, they're having a sushi night, what's a little bit different? And I think I'd mentioned it a couple of months ago that, it, that it's cool to eat sushi off a hot girl. Not, you know, not trying to say I'll be the hot girl that you get to eat sushi off of, but it was great. I came in and did, did my day's work and then got a boat over to um, Mosquito and... Um, it was a bit different here because it's really hot and the sushi got really, really quite warm and stuck to me, so that was, that was interesting. But it was fun. I love that I get to be an accountant and do this stuff and then go lay on a table and have people suck, you know, soy sauce out of my belly button in the evening. It's brilliant. <laughs> Who else gets to do that? Not all sushi at NECA is eaten off hot girls. Today, it will be served on a kayak in the pool. Our role today is to uh, look after sushi kayak. Uh, being sexy. Being sexy. And poop. Making the prince jealous. <laughs> uh, yes, of course. Originally from France, head chef Clement arrived last year after previously working at the Ritz in London. The sushi with sushi boat with this lovely food. Um, yeah, you have to make sure that the guy who delivers the food is. Yeah, the same as the food, really. Sexy. Uh, about 10 minutes before we call the guests come, we pull the pipe with the ice, palms, flowers, chopsticks, and then we add the sushi to it. And then uh, I'll come in the water, float about, and people will jump in the pool and have fun, have drinks, eat the sushi. I might have a cocktail or two, sneaky ones as well. Let's have some fun. Yeah. I can't believe you're getting paid to do that, honestly. This is insane. This is insane. Necker may be one of the most expensive holiday destinations in the world, but once here, everything is included from meals to scuba diving and champagne. This means Clement and his staff of 12 are on call 24 hours a day to meet the guests every whim. Some group are really demanding, um, like all day they, they, they will ask, ask for food. But again, like we, we always adapt ourselves to after the first day, we, we pretty much get the, the shape of the group and we pretty much find out how it's gonna be, how it's gonna be in the next few days. So yeah, if we need to change the, the planning and stay longer and just to deliver what we have to deliver. I remember the worst was uh, one day, it was, it was one holiday day actually, and, uh, and uh, one of the guests really wants some caviar. And uh, we, have, we had to, to get some from St. Thomas, I believe. Uh, to bring to Nick Island on the bank holiday day. Uh, that was a challenge. I, with my sous chef, we literally start calling uh, at 8 in the morning and we, we just received the caviar at half past 6, 7 o'clock at night, just ready to serve on the, for the aperitif, really. Uh, that was a nightmare. We get a lot of people coming here who are in the public eye and therefore if they go to a hotel or um, they can't completely switch off. And when you go on holiday, you want to 100% switch off. So NEC is a place where people can literally draw up the drawbridge and, and uh, let their hair down and, and uh, relax. It's just a lovely letter that Diana sent. Um, she used to come uh, with um, her children when she was when they were very young, just to get away from the press. And she was one of the nicest people I ever spent time knowing. And she was always incredibly polite and always wrote the most beautiful thank you letters. So, yeah, it was a nice touch. And she had a magical time. And you know, she came with family and family and friends. And uh, you know, it was a place where the kids could also let their hair down and holiday and frolic without without being in the public eye. So it was perfect.
This is the main house. Um, this is the dining room table where we normally have big dinners and there's lots of people. There's a gong somewhere that gets gonged once you uh, start dinner. Penny is one of Necker's most frequent visitors and considers the island her second home. I've been coming to Necker for 10 years, about twice a year, two to three times a year. This is my 21st time on Necker. It's just a place of absolute beauty. It's really lovely. I was born in the north of England, and uh, I've lived in New York for over 15 years. Reach back to Penny and her friends often hire the entire island exclusively. But this week, she's arrived with just one of her girlfriends. It's a busy New York life. I'm a real estate developer. Pushing yourself up. There we go. And this is a complete stress buster. It, you know, it's everything that you look forward to when you're having a busy, stressful day. It's coming here and just letting go and just relaxing. Gently back up to the top, reaching tall. The staff are, are an inherent part of your vacation. It's very fun and they're here to make the vacation that you want. Scooping through the hands again to an upward dog. None of them are bad on the eyes. <laughs> they're all pretty good looking. <laughs> yeah, we have some favorites. Conditions for kite surfing and wind and water sports are great. I come to work every day with five things, basically. T-shirt, boy shorts, radio, phone, and sunnies. That's everything. Elias left school just as the recession hit his native Spain and had to look abroad for a job. I was working in London in a sailing diving shop. One day we got a massive delivery of kitesurfing stuff and uh, it had a label Richard Branson, so I asked, who's this customer or who, how are we selling all this stuff? And they say, oh, do you know who's Richard Branson? I had no idea. So I just Google it and uh, this, the first thing that came was this picture of Richard doing kite with this neck against his back. I like, hold on, who's, who's going in here? So I just wrote a letter, five lines, just asking for an advice. So they answered me back, they said, well, Richard's pretty busy, they couldn't read you your letter, but he was the best. Tell me about yourself. And after a few emails, they told me that he's got, he had this island in the Caribbean about water sports. They asked me for my CV, and they asked me to come to give him a hand for a week. It was really hard for those days, those 10 days. And they, they offered me the full-time job. So I said, yeah, definitely, yeah, absolutely. And here I am. You don't see mine in here. You don't talk about money. You don't talk about economy. You don't talk about politics. It really helps you appreciate what you really have, which is not money, which is not what you really need in life. This is literally priceless. The eight members of the water sports team usually work six days a week, but the end of their shift does come with a few perks. It was a really special end of the day, the other day. And we got this call from uh, one of the guys from water sports coming back from the airport, saying that they just saw a big, really big group of dolphins swimming around. I believe there's a special connection between dolphins and, and humans. It doesn't happen really often, but when it does, it just makes your day, your week, your month. It's, it's really, really special. Beautiful. I mean, being in the water with those animals is just something really special. Makes your day. It was magical. It was really great. Oh, yeah! It's the sickest place in the world to, to be. I mean, it's unreal. It's, it's paradise, for sure. 
You can't beat it. While most leave the island at the end of their shift, there are 20 staff that live on Necker all year round. It's considered a privilege. You need some people to live here. Like, you need your chief engineer to live here. The power goes out, the water, or if there's problems with the rooms, that kind of stuff. So, drives Adam mad, he gets called middle of the night. And then Helen's here because Richard sometimes needs to do stuff. Chef Joe and Gaz, so obviously you get food requests at night. Good evening. Good evening. Two hours later. Maybe later. <laughs> You're on time. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't the best day of my life. To be honest, today. <laughs> it was the best day. I think it was. I think it was. <laughs> really? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, I got it. <laughs> nice. Forget, forget about it. Still here. Do you want uh, a drink? Yeah. Like, yeah. Two drinks. Like. <laughs> Swig at the beer before it goes up the uh, up the chicken's bum. Here, George, you have that one. The idea is that the beer boils up inside the chicken and it keeps the chicken really moist and it helps to uh, stand it up on the barbecue. He's not even a chef. <laughs> there you go. That's, that's textbook beer can chicken. Living on an island like this is a really intense environment. You've got to know when to take yourself out of it and when to just say, right, I need to have a night off island, two nights off island, because otherwise it does get too much. There you go. What do you think about this, chef? <laughs> Everyone's got to learn to be really good at being able to work together, having a very, very professional work relationship, but then also being able to go into a social circle together and being able to pretty much drop all of that sort of structure that you have at work and just become much more on a sort of even level and even, even mm. basis. Yeah. yeah, whatever's happened at work stays at work. It's a matter of survival, really. If you can't, yeah. if you can't go and socialise with people, it would become a really, really mm. lonely place. It's our home as well. So, yes, it's the island that we're running to give guests the unique experience that they have, but it's also our home, and so the 20 people that live here need to be able to go home, switch off, relax. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Many staff on NECA are single and under 30 when they arrive, but working in such close proximity means relationships inevitably develop. When you are in remote locations, there are definitely romances, and it certainly helps when you've had a tough day to go home and have that person give you a kiss on the head, put their arm around you and say, everything is going to be OK. Not far away is a very different world, neighbouring island Virgin Gorda, home to over half of Necker's employees. With a population of just 5,000, it's a tightly knit community, many of whom are dependent on the tourist industry. Every morning, the workers' daily commute begins at 6am, when the staff bus collects them to catch the ferry to work. You're going to beat me this morning, man. Get up at 4, 4.30 to get ready. Get the kids' breakfast ready. Get myself ready for the bus at 6.15. Good morning. Good morning. Housekeeper Agatha is used to the early start. I have two girls and five boys, aged from 34 to 8 years. The youngest one is 8 years. What's the best part of this job? Oh, we're not going home. <laughs> we're not going home in the afternoon. <laughs> Get the people through here. Well, what's the worst part of this job? <laughs> coming to work early. Most of some, sometimes you come to work five o'clock, reach here for five, for five thirty. When you guests living early, reach here for five thirty. What are you gonna do when you finish working here? Maybe do something on my own. Open my little business. I'm going to open my clothes, a clothes store. Selling clothes. Hi, Nat. Um, I've got a couple here. They're wondering if they could do a couple's massage on the floating trampoline off Turtle Beach. 
No problem, Christine. Would they like champagne and strawberries with the massage? That would be great. Thanks, Matt. I try not to think about how much it costs. <laughs> <laughs> it's that, um... <laughs> it's definitely the... For me, it's... If I've got the money, I'm going to spend it on me. I know that's quite selfish, but... To us, this is, this is an extravagant, but back at home, we don't live in, in a particularly big, extravagant house. It's, we just live in a nice terrace street. It's just a nice area. Um, there's nothing extravagant about the way we live or our lifestyle. So this, to us, is our one little extravagance that we do for ourselves. Yeah, so it, it's... I don't think we have too much of a stressful life, but... Um, we don't have a stressful life. We don't have a stressful life. We have a great <laughs> life. Uh, I only have a part-time job these days as a bicycle mechanic, that's what I do. <laughs> I think the assumption, just purely from... Um, just looking at us, cos you're older <laughs> than me... They, they would assume that I was some successful businessman, I would assume. Yeah. A lot of the, the, the men, especially on, on the island, will go and talk to Patch and um, they don't really speak to, to me particularly. When they're introduced, they, they want to know what Patch's business is, what do you do, what, how do you make your money? Um, and you have great pleasure in saying that you're a bike mechanic. And then leave it a couple of days and then the, I think your best line was um, what makes you assume that I've got the money? And then just stood up and walked off. And next thing he's all... Hi, Kerry, how are you? <laughs> You're like, oh, now you want to know me. Now, oh, I see. And it's, it's very much about who's got what, who's, who's got the most, who does what for a living. You must be dying in that series. <laughs> you can do it, hun. Kerry came into an inheritance when she was 21, which allows her and Patch to regularly visit the island. We don't openly promote where we go on holiday. We say we come to the Caribbean, we don't necessarily say that we're coming onto Necker. Yeah, well, we'll be busted when this comes out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have to hit him with the golf ball. But these are actually fish food, right? They're not real golf balls, in case you were worrying where they went to. They dissolve. Being an exclusive private island in the middle of the Caribbean Sea comes with some unique challenges. To get the simplest products delivered is difficult enough, but guests here expect only the best. Hey, young man, you all right? As the nearest airport is over an hour away, almost everything must be brought in by boat this means that head chef Clement is heavily reliant on weekly shipments. Yeah, I like to say this is the most difficult uh, part of the job, to be honest. Um, it's, it's always a challenge, really. And obviously because the supplier is not at the dock, so you just receive and it's no way back, to be honest. If the fish is not right, we take picture uh, straight away and we send by email to the, to the supplier. So it's, uh, it's a big fight after on the phone. Yeah, you good? It's in the fish fridge. Right. That's it. That's one of the big ones uh, weekly. Uh, actually, today we're pretty lucky. It's sunny. Uh, it happened a few times that we get the rain. Honestly, it's, it's a nightmare. Today, every Tuesday, it's, it's a nasty one, yeah. Somebody check this down. Yeah. Right. Everything. Cool, thanks. But not all the kitchen's needs are met by the local weekly food shipment. On occasion, special ingredients like truffles and rare cheeses are flown in from some of the best markets in the world. This one is from Paris. Yeah, this one. So the um, French cheese and, uh, and meat uh, we just received. Uh, yeah, that's a good example because we just need some parmesan now and it just arrived like 10 minutes ago, so it's always uh, like this in the car. Right here where we're doing now, we're getting some wood for bonfire tonight on Bali High Beach. 
It's going to be lovely tonight. One of the benefits of being on a Caribbean island is that breakfast, lunch and dinner can all be served al fresco, something Richard particularly enjoys. One of the jobs of Necker is to entertain Richard. He's like any other guest that comes here. He works incredibly hard. Um, and then when he's not working, he likes to enjoy himself. So when he's here, we'll try and make sure we do his favorite dinner locations. So yeah, it is to entertain him. Yeah, what did you do this afternoon? Are you we working? Hung out on the beach. Oh, just chilling. Oh, actually, yeah, you, you, what you, you sent my wife back, field. very wrecked. <laughs> I'm she I'm was really she good. was seriously right. I mean, she was seriously right. Wishing that happened. She hasn't wanted to jump on top of me for a long time. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, you are too. Thank you. I just, so, <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I, I have to send us a lunch with you more often. Yeah, <laughs> no, we make really good drinking buddies actually. Where have you been hiding? <laughs> we've been we've been scuba diving. Scuba diving. Oh, nice. Life oh, really? Yes. Oh, great. Thank you, sir. Cheers. 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 And then I've got a butterfly leg of lamb. Okay. And then honey marinade. It's Robbie and girlfriend Rachel's first time on Necker. He bid sixteen thousand pounds in a charity auction for the chance to spend a week on the island. We sell elevators. It's a family business. So, you know, I'm not uh, a record, you know, executive virgin, you know, records. It's not like, uh, you know, own an airline or anything. Just a, just a guy in Ohio that sells elevators. But, uh, but yeah, Richard's inspired me, certainly. And that's a big reason. And so it was very spur of the moment after all of, you know, following him for, for a while, reading his books, uh, to, to see Necker Island pop up on a option for a, a charity item it's like okay yep that's happening for guests like robbie the chance to have a meal and chat with richard is one of necker's main attractions we walked up to lunch this morning and richard's just sitting there at the table you know eating a burger you know and he's just like hey still need to hit him up more because yeah i haven't gotten enough you know facetime hoping to have a conversation with him you know here tonight at dinner as well One of the island's biggest challenges is the weather. The hurricane season between September and October brings the threat of torrential rain and thunderstorms. Three years ago, nature dealt the island a devastating blow when the great house was hit by a bolt of lightning. At about four in the morning, um, my son, uh, I, I suddenly heard him screaming, fire at the great house, fire at the great house, and jumped out of bed. Uh, start naked, looked up at the great house, there were 300-foot flames coming out of the house, and I just ran you know, straight for the main house with my son. And we had uh, my mother, my, all my nephews, nieces, Holly, my daughter, and you know, various other people in the great house. Uh, and at that stage, didn't know whether they'd all got out. Um, I ran straight into a cacti, which is not a good idea when you start naked, um, but didn't feel a thing, because I was you know, just more worried about just getting there. Fortunately, one person woke up, my, my nephew Jack, and he managed to get everybody out. And um, Kate famously carried my, my mum out. People are thinking, right, what do, we, what do we do now? Because going through the house, you've got your rooms, there's the living space, but there's also all the infrastructure that it takes to run this place. So, you know, all of that absolutely key stuff is gone, and you're sort of left with a with the one surviving laptop and a cell phone with marginal reception on it thinking okay how do we kind of build mm. back up back up from here and while that's happening richard of course calls and says well, you know what architect are we going to use let's get them down here and it was just straight into the straight yeah. into the new uh, planning stage and it also meant that as a as a business we were able to recover very quickly so we didn't yeah. have to make people redundant and it was you know, tough in one sense because you know, we did lose a lot of business but we all just got on and rebuilt. Yeah. The new great house is now twice the size of Richard's original family home. And the fire appears to have made Necker more popular than ever. You don't want everybody. <laughs> <laughs> you could be touching on a little bit of overdevelopment if you weren't careful, I think. Because 
nine years ago, there were nowhere near as many buildings here as there are now. No. And they, they've appeared while we've been coming, haven't they? Yeah. Yeah. I do kind of slightly wonder whether you can actually support many more buildings on here, really, before it's a bit... When we've come before, there was... You knew, even at maximum capacity, it was still going to be quite a small, intimate group. You kind of really get to know each other, and it's a really nice bond. If it gets too big, you might have sort of just gone to one of the big, big resorts. This exclusivity is part of the allure. The chance not only to meet Richard Branson, but potentially do business with him and other like-minded wealthy people. This morning, the team are organising a guest breakfast on Richard's other island. In 2007, he took the opportunity to buy neighbouring Mosquito Island for £10 million. For the past year, he's been selling plots of land on Mosquito to anyone that might have several million pounds to spare. This is kind of the, the waiting game where we sometimes we just finish as the guests are pulling up to the beach because they're like really on time and they're at water sports at nine and they sail down here in a second and then other times they're paddle boarding and kayaking and we have a little bit more time to finish up and, and get everything ready for them. Perfect. I think we're all set. Hello. How was the sale? Kezia was raised in the British Virgin Islands. It's her job to get the party started. And at NECA, that means cocktails for breakfast. Can I get you something to drink? Uh, I will have actually mimosa, please. A mimosa? Yes. Absolutely. Two mimosas? Sure. You're definitely setting the standard, Robbie, for how late everyone's got to stay up and how hard they've got to party. That's my goal. <laughs> How are you? A few beers too many again. As always, it means we've done our job properly. You have to good. <laughs> you don't want to hair the dog yet? <laughs> I'll ask you in a few hours. <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to go home. No. <laughs> Just stay. The party atmosphere isn't just for the guests on NECA. During rare downtime, staff like Junior are allowed to enjoy the island themselves. We don't have like a little party sometime. They just give us a little party. And then we go down there and we eat lunch. We can go jump in the water, drink a little beer, and be in the water, drink a little red wine or something, and feel like a millionaire. <laughs> We do an induction with our managers, and you go around and you do uh, you do a day's work or a half day's work with the different teams. You just kind of get to know what it's like to do that to do that job. I remember doing the grounds one, and I mean those guys work seriously hard. They go. I got to 11 o'clock in the morning, and the shift goes till 12, and and we still had to go and move another table, another set of chairs. And I'm just thinking, can't we just sit down right now? I'm dripping in sweat. I'm really. Really thirsty, so yeah, those boys are hard workers, no two ways about it. The Caribbean people love walk in the sun. Walk in the sun and do hard work. Them know where they walk in the office and the Dunk Island people love to walk in the sun. Because if I go in the office now, I, go, I go can't be the AC. Because if you're in the office and alone, do exercise. If you exercise, you'll become like a big mampy. <laughs> so tonight is disco night for the guests. Um, so we invite them up for the usual cocktails and dinner, and then we give them an invite and encourage them to dress up for disco night with some of our accessories. <laughs> we do a lot of fancy dress here on Necker. Obviously, Richard wants Necker to be a place where people can come and relax and have fun, enjoy themselves. And um, doing something like this, it's just in your everyday life, it's not usually something that you'd be doing. And it kind of lets people make fun of themselves a little bit. Um, a lot of the times we do definitely try and be the instigators for a good party because we like one ourselves too. 
We once had a new management team that came and they brought in two rules. The first, staff cannot drink with the guests and staff may not um, have relationships with the guests. That management couple lasted one weekend. It's um, not the way this island would wor work or run very well. <laughs> Richard is a matchmaker. <laughs> so for some of the, the girls here who are gorgeous, who are single, then um, Richard does make it a, a bit of a mission to make sure that they're well looked after. We're all definitely social people. If the guest asks us to have a drink with them, then yeah, maybe we'll have one. I mean, most people here, we're all pretty fun anyways <laughs> so um, it doesn't it doesn't take much for us to just kind of get into that mood you might have someone teaching you kite surfing during the day and then in the evening you've got them making your shots and your you know your drinks you've got you know the wives that love the boys and love to flirt with them Because we have a bit more people contact, we're just able to be a bit more friendly. Keeping the guests happy isn't as simple as just serving them cocktails. General Manager Kenny faces a constant battle with Mother Nature. It's a problem all over the Caribbean at the moment. It's just this, the beaches kind of balance out with the swell and the, and the wind. So the swell goes that way and the wind goes that way. And there hasn't been much swell for the last year and a half. So the beach is the wrong end and we're just putting some back out there before we start losing it. They're just wasting their time. That sand is fine where it is. But they, can, they need to know you date knock this down a couple of feet. The idea is that he, at that half of the beach we leave, and this half of the beach we pick all of this sand up, put it in the back of the truck and take it up to the top. Are you with me? Mm-hmm. Right, mate, if you chat to him about that, I'm going to go and just... Change your plan, man. Um, politics in this place. They want you to start... They want you to start taking the stuff out of the sea into, into your, into your uh, T-Rex and them over to the, to the beach. Have you got the picture on you? Yeah. Can you just have a look at it? Because we've had wind going that way and no swell, or very little swell for the last year and a half, the beach, which is normally there, is there. So we're just picking up this sand on the shore side and moving it up to this end of the beach. At the moment, the dock is preventing it going round, but it's now got to such a size that if all this sand goes there, it's gonna go round the dock, and then we're gonna start losing it. Getting heavy machinery shipped in isn't cheap. Kenny has only three days to reshape the most popular beach on the island. Thousand dollars a day, don't let them stop moving. Can be a really, really big challenge. There's always a whole bunch of different elements going on the island at the same time and because we operate all the time you do have to work out how you can do all the back of house stuff that's essential whilst at the same time have the guests on the island and make sure that that experience is maintained throughout so yeah choreographing stuff is really really key Kenny met his wife Lisa on NECA when she came to set up the spa and he was teaching Richard to kite surf. They are the longest serving expats on the island. So what are you up to at school today? Bamis. The children, Theo and Zara, are the only kids that live on NECA. Come on then. Come on. As the workers arrive in the morning, Kenny and Lisa take the boat back to Virgin Gorda to do the school run. Right, peeps, come and take your seats. Have we got anyone else who's married who lives on the island? No. No, just us. Just us. Yeah, just us. 
Yeah. It's pretty cool. The, the kids get on really well with everyone, and yeah, they go and socialise with all the guys. Like Theo joining in with all the water sports crew. He loves doing that, and it's just it's really good for him as well. They go to a school which is not totally different to a school you'd go to in England. They go to they go to the park, which is you know, the same as what you'd go to in England. They go to you know, they get homework. They do maths. They do English. They go to their friends' houses. When you're in this kind of job. You do tend to put a time on how long you're going to be somewhere, but for the first time ever, I think we very much feel it's home. And I think with the children being the age they are and being happy, you, you stop thinking it's two, three years. It's, and so can't can't really put a time length on how long we'll be here, because right now it's fantastic. We're really, really happy and we, we love yeah. it. The biggest thing you miss being here is your family, because that's the biggest compromise you make being here is not being near brothers, sisters, parents, grandparents, and all of those people. So, yeah, it would be great to have more of more of that. Um, but I guess you, it's just a decision you take with the lifestyle and with the job, and um, you make the most of it when you do get it. While Kenny and Lisa are able to take their children to school, workers like Agatha begin the day long before the school run. You have to pay my bills, you have to do what I have to do. So, it's good. This is a private resort, so you do things different to the other resorts. Mm -hmm. So, it's, it's a lot of difference here. What's the main, what's the biggest difference? <laughs> it's expensive. <laughs> it's ex really expensive. What do you think you would do with that kind of money? Build a house. <laughs> I will build my own house. Where do you live now then? In, the, in a rented apartment. And how many bedrooms have you got in your apartment? Two. The smallest, the younger ones live with me. So if you had lots and lots of money, you'd build a house? Yeah, a big one. <laughs> the master bedroom to be upstairs. Downstairs, the, 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 the family, bed, family room downstairs. But my bedroom will be upstairs. Away from all the children? Yep. Do you think money can buy you happiness? Sometimes, yeah. Okay, if, you have, if you have what you need, you'll be happy, so. Can my happy, you can my happiness, yeah. Okay, if I have my house, I'll be happy. So money will give me that, so, yeah. Not all the staff see the Caribbean as a place where they could settle down and raise a family. You look paradise, it's uh, the sun, the sea, all year long. Um, for, for, for me, it's more like a holiday destination where you really enjoy on holiday. Um, and I definitely miss the season in France. Um, I love to be cold in winter. Um, I love when the, the first sunny day come in the, in the summer, or you're just so excited and happy to, to just have a drink on the terrace where here you, at some point, you just forget about all these little things. And it's just hot all the time and you're complaining all the time because you're sweating. Yeah, how many do you want? One. Oh, just one? Would you like it any deeper at all? Uh, you could go, you could go a little deeper on the legs. It's Robbie and Rachel's last day on the island. They're having one final visit to the spa before they head back to Ohio. The staff here, I mean, I think one of the biggest worries about coming back is what if they're not all here? Because um, they really do, they make it better than any just luxurious place could be. They add to the experience. And everybody just gets along really well and it feels like you're on vacation with all your friends and uh, like they're just part of your, your group of friends. So uh, that's been, above, uh, that exceeded expectations. The casual Perfect. environment is just so cool. I mean, Richard's been, he's just sitting at lunch. You know, you walk up to the picnic table on the beach and he's just sitting there eating lunch with his wife, Joan, and uh, they're just so friendly. I basically pitched the idea that because I sell elevators or lifts, uh, I pitched to him basically having a, uh, a lift on the island 
the, the saying in America is the elevator pitch. So you've got to do your business idea. You should be able to sum it up in about 90 seconds to two minutes. And so he said, well, what if we did a lift here and anybody that wants to pitch me on something has to jump in the lift and ride it down in 90 seconds. If they can't sell me on it in that amount of time, then that's their only chance. We've had such a great week here and, and um, had such a fun time with the staff and it's been a, an absolutely amazing time. And we've left and um, I, I have actually cried <laughs> leaving on Red Duck and leaving because you're thinking, I don't know when I'm going to come back here. Have a good journey, guys. Take care. Thanks. 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 Nice Most of us expats that live here, we've left our families behind, and so we're, you know, we're, we're each other's family, and we're more, we're more, we're just closer, more open. There's, there's more people that maybe wouldn't fit in in normal societies. You know, they're just a bit more different, and there's a lot of us here that are a bit different. So it's interesting, you know, anything goes. I don't like using the word paradise because it, it seems like it's the best place and I haven't been around that much. I would like to explore much more. Paradise, I'd say maybe a good job and house in the coast world in England. NECA um, provides a little bit of a bubble um, around you, so it must be difficult to move on from this. I think you definitely need to have a transition period to get back into reality, normal life, whatever that is. We definitely live uh, the rest of our lives on Mecca and, um, and our next lives too, if we have a choice. <laughs> I hate leaving Mecca. <laughs> but um, back in two days time, so not gone for long. My life is, it's, it, it is unreal. I'm gonna wake up from the most wonderful dream one day and think, oh, what a pity, I wish I'd had that life. <laughs>